In this video, we're going to look at the V-Ray rendering engine in SketchUp, and I'm working in SketchUp Pro 2022. If you're brand new to V-Ray and V-Ray and SketchUp, this is a good video to, be, to just orient ourselves at where it's located and some very basic principles on, on how, to, how we use it. Once you've installed V-Ray, you will get a um, under your extensions a V-Ray menu where you can access many controls. You may also already see some V-Ray toolbars when you open up SketchUp, but if you don't, or if you've turned those off, we can access our toolbars by right-clicking in an unprogrammed part of the uh, toolbar interface. And I can see here I have V-Ray for SketchUp, V-Ray Lights, V-Ray Objects, and V-Ray Utilities. And I'm going to open up just V-Ray for SketchUp. This is kind of a, a good consolidated toolbar of some of our primary features in, in V-Ray. And of importance to me at this point is the very first button, which is my asset editor, and the teapot, which if you're unaware of the history of computer graphics, the teapot came from the University of Utah in early computer graphics programming, and it's a rigorous model for testing and evaluating rendering and material algorithms, and that's why the teapot is a common symbol used in many uh, rendering and modeling applications. So the teapot is our render control. So those two buttons are what we're going to look at here. Our asset editor, if I click it, opens up this floating window, which allows us to control a number of features within V-Ray. It's a very central location for managing V-Ray as it is working in whatever scene we're in. And in a beautiful way, this asset editor is common across several platforms. So for instance, if you use V-Ray, in Rhino as a modeler, it's going to look entirely the same. And that allows us to move between different applications. Our asset editor has some buttons at the top that allow us to change um, kind of modally what we're looking at. It also has a left and a right kind of expansion. And the left expansion will open up a materials library if you've downloaded it. I, this is a fresh installation that I have. I haven't downloaded that library yet. But if we had, we'd see a whole deep material library that comes with SketchUp. And at the base of this control, I have some, uh, some commands that are specific to that material library. And on the right-hand side, I have a panel that gives me deeper information about what I'm looking at in my central panel. And I have materials as one mode. So in the materials mode, I see here materials that are currently defined in this V-Ray SketchUp a file in this scene. And on the right hand side for any one of those materials, the um, kind of all the control mechanics for that material. And there will be videos in my series about managing and adjusting and understanding these processes. It's, a, it's maybe a little overwhelming at first because there's so many controls to look at. But what's important is this is the list of materials and this is the material properties for whichever is selected. I then have a lights mode, which controls and gives me feedback on lights in my scene. And if I select a light, for instance, in my default scene, I have a sunlight. That same panel on the right hand side that had given us specific information about materials now gives us specific um, controls about the light. The next button over is geometry. I don't have any specific V-Ray geometry in my scene yet. So it doesn't show me a list. In fact, it gives me a pop-up menu to make geometry. And this may be a little confusing at first because we may think, well, I'm in SketchUp. I already have geometry. I have modeled shapes and forms that I've made. But what this, this command means or this mode is this is geometry that is specific to V-Ray. So there are certain object types that are native to the V-Ray rendering system and make um, make V-Ray very attractive as a renderer. For instance, there's a way of taking models from of high complexity that are outside of SketchUp and to embed them so that they're only used when you're actually rendering. Let's say you're making vegetation or trees that are high, high, high detail models. You don't want those in your SketchUp scene when you're not rendering. You really only need them when you're making an image, synthesizing an image from your geometry. And so these proxy models this allows you to have a low resolution proxy model in your SketchUp scene and have that link to a much, much higher detail model outside of your scene. We also have fur for making generative fur and um, grass and such. We can displace models, which takes a model and makes it 
much higher in detail and subdivides it and moves points around on the model. We can scatter objects. So long story short, specific geometry that works with V-Ray. Um, to the right of that, I have render elements. If you're new to rendering, you might think um, when I render, I get a single image that is my synthesized representation of that scene with those lights and materials from a camera view. And that's true, but V-Ray as a rendering engine allows you to save out just individual components of that final image. Things like what does the effect of one light look like, or only the reflection, or only the refraction that I see through. And these are called render elements, or maybe in another workflow, render layers. And I could use a program like Adobe Photoshop, or the Foundry's Nuke, or After Effects to bring these together and stylize an image and have more editorial control over how each of these layers that makes up one final affective image can be can be built. To the right of that, I have textures for V-Ray specific textures that are placed into materials, or in this case, placed into my environment. And all I have at this point is an a sky, sky texture located into my environment. To the right of that, and pretty distinct with this line, I have my settings. And these are, again, perhaps overwhelming, but these are my, my rendering settings. How can I drill down and control very specifically how my rendering engine is optimized? Rendering is often a trade-off between time and detail and resolution and final image quality. And there are many controls at play that let us choose to have let's say, higher detail over speed, or speed over detail, or resolution over speed. And this is where we're going to be able to manipulate the rendering engine. It's worth noting that under the very first set of settings called render, and notice each of these arrows can be opened or closed to show or hide more detail, there is a single quality slider from low to high plus and this is a good starting point when we're rendering that it, it is going to change many controls buried in here. And perhaps you can see if you look over in these render parameters, as I'm scaling this from medium down to low or to high, it is changing a number of parameters. So this is a, is a nice entry point into um, very generally what quality do I want in a render. And then to the right of settings, I have my rendering control. Uh, my teapot, which will start the process of rendering my current view into an image with very specific settings that are buried in here. And lastly, I have my open V-Ray frame buffer. A frame buffer is a dialog box or a window that has the synthesized rendered image. So it's a free freestanding window that lets me see what's being rendered and also save what's being rendered make changes to what's being rendered on an image basis, not necessarily a model basis. Let's close down the asset editor and go back to our V-Ray for SketchUp toolbar. What I have in this scene is the default scale figure from SketchUp that came with the scene. And I've built a simple little folly. Um, folly being a term that comes from often garden design, landscape design, an architectural element that is not programmed as a house or a commercial entity, but is there as something to look at and to stand on and sit on and participate in. So it tends to be modest in scale. And because it doesn't have to serve particularly high programmatic purposes, can kind of be gestural and open and, and um, not have some of the constraints of traditional architecture. So that's what I have in this scene. I'm going to make a view that approximates an eye level view and I'm approximating it by aligning where I think the eyes of the scale figure would be with the horizon line. So I'm close to uh, to an eye level view and I'm going to click on this render button. And what we'll see is our frame buffer. This window opens up and I have my piece of geometry with the color and material that was added in SketchUp, which is the default materiality. I have my scale figure 
I can scroll in and out. The image is a set resolution. We haven't seen yet where we set that resolution, but it is a set resolution. And my sky is generally a light blue. Below my sky, where there would be ground, is a gray. And I have light coming in from a preset direction. Very bright light where it's hitting my folly, my model. And then on the inside, where the model um, isn't getting direct light, I see indirect light or light that is bounced and reflected off of the ground or from the sky, but not from the sun. And this is often what we will get when we first start rendering, rendering in V-Ray, when we haven't manipulated with any intention our lights or our settings or our resolution. Um, and it has a very different visual quality than SketchUp. And we'll see as we get deeper into V-Ray that we'll be able to control quite precisely the output that we're getting and achieve levels of photorealism if that's dictated or non-photorealism if that is, is not desired. In my frame buffer, I can save using this icon here for, for, a, um, for a disk, kind of an old fashioned icon really at this point, um, little floppy disk, three and a half inch disk it looks like, save current channel. So my current channel is what I'm looking at. And if I were to click to save, I can save that into a number of different kind of traditional conventional file formats. And then I can close that window, change my view, render again. Um, and that's a very, very lightweight introduction to how we begin to orient ourselves around V-Ray in SketchUp Pro 2022.